artist, it's Miss Coon, and today we're going to talk about an art term called genre. Genre is a word that started being used to discuss art in the early 1600s, and it's just a way of defining the content or the topic of a particular picture. So it could be a portrait, that's a type of genre painting, it could be a landscape or a still life. We're going to talk specifically about landscapes, and that's a picture of a place. And within that genre, landscapes can be broken into landscapes, cityscapes, seascapes, and waterscapes, but we're going to focus on seascapes. We'll look at a few examples in a moment. Our I can statement today is I can extend skills by individually following six sequential steps to create works of art that are real or imaginary. So we're going to create a seascape, either one you've seen before or one that you imagine, and it needs to have three parts. Um, landscapes usually have something in the foreground that's what's closest to you, in the middle ground what's in the middle, and something in the background what's furthest away. So let's look at a few seascapes. This painting is called Seascapes at St. Marie's. It was painted by Vincent van Gogh in 1888. It's an oil painting and it's at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. If you look closely at this seascape, you can see the foreground has ocean waves. The middle ground has a sailboat and way in the background, there are two more sailboats and a sky. This seascape is called the Gulf Stream. It was painted by Winslow Homer in 1899. It's oil on canvas and it's at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. If you look closely at this seascape, you can see sharks in the foreground. They're what's closest to the viewer. In the middle ground, there's a small boat with a passenger. And in the background, there's stormy weather that's approaching and maybe a ship that's far off in the distance on the left. This seascape is called The Great Wave. It was painted by a Japanese artist, Hokusai, in 1831. It's a woodblock print. If you look very closely at this, you can see the foreground, there's a long ship and a small wave. In the middle ground, there's a giant wave and a small ship. And then in the very background, there's an island, I believe it's Mount Fuji. This seascape is called Be Calmed Off Halfway Rock. It's by Fitzhugh Lane. It was painted in 1860. It's oil on canvas and it's at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC. This seascape has a dinghy boat. It's a small ship with that's rowed in. Um, that's in the foreground. The middle ground has four ships and in the very far background we can see land and sky. Okay, I want to talk really quickly about the supplies that you'll need for today. You need a pencil, crayons, a watercolor set with a brush, and a cup of water. So when you start your seascape and you're drawing your picture, if you want to turn your paper vertical or horizontal, that's fine. I'm going to turn mine horizontal, and I'm going to start by drawing something in my foreground. So I'm going to have just a little bit of land visible in my foreground and I'm going to add a palm tree and you don't have to draw the same things in your seascape that I'm drawing. Remember this is either a real place that you've seen before or one from my, your imagination. I'm just imagining one. So I'm going to draw palm tree in my foreground. That's what's closest to me or closest to my viewer. I think I'll draw another right here that's kind of going off to the side. And it is okay for objects in your picture to go off your paper. My eraser's a little bit yuck. That's okay. Okay, so I have a beach in the front and two palm trees. And then I'm going to add a sailboat in my middle ground, in the middle of my picture. So I'm going to start by drawing the top of my boat and the sides coming down. I'm not going to worry about the bottom yet because the water is going to kind of wiggle in front of it, but I will go ahead and draw the mast and my sails. Again, you can draw your ship completely different. If you want to draw a pirate ship 
or a cruise ship, or maybe your seascape doesn't have a ship in it at all. Maybe it has um, an ocean animal jumping up. That would be fine, too. Or a submarine. So I'm going to have some waves in the front. My water is going to wave through the background. And then I believe I'm going to have a sun setting in the background. Maybe just a few clouds. And a few extra waves. So I have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. My next step that I'm going to need, oh, I forgot to ask you to find, um, I'm going to outline with a black crayon. If you don't have a black crayon and you want to use a black Sharpie marker, permanent marker, that is fine. But I'm going to um, speed up my video so you don't have to spend too much time watching me. Now that I finished outlining with my black crayon, I'm going to use some of my other colors to add just a few details to my picture before I get started painting. And you don't have to use the colors the same way that I'm using them. I'm going to, because this will be a sandy color, I'm going to add just a light brush of a sandy color on my beach. I'm not going to color it all the way in because I know that I'm going to add some paint. My sun is in the very far background, so it's going to cast a shadow that's going to cause a shadow to go behind my palm trees um, into my foreground. So I'm going to have little palm tree shadows that go off my paper. I can add a little bit of color on my palm leaves. Again, you don't have to color the whole thing in. If you would like to, you can. I'm going to add a little bit of color. Here. My ship. I'm going to add a little bit of color on my ship around the edges and it might reflect on the water just a little and my ship's going to be red so whatever color you're planning on using for your ship if you want to do a little reflection in the water that's a pretty good idea and my sun would be reflecting a little bit on the water too so I'm going to do a little bit of yellow on my water and I'm going to add some blue wiggles in my water anywhere that you would like. And sometimes the other colors in the water might look a little blue or a little green or a little purple. So if you want to add a few different values of colors, you can. And even white. It looks like I don't have a white. Um, that's okay. I may come back and find one in a second. If you have anything that's really small and you think might be kind of difficult to color or paint in later, you can go ahead and color that in. My mass on my ship is kind of thin. So I'm going to add just a little bit of this light green here and there. So I think I may add just a few little rays coming off. Um, so I'm going to stop my video for a second and get my paint ready. Okay, I did find a white crayon so I'm going to go back in and add a few little white spots in my water and I know that it won't show up right now because white crayon on white paper doesn't do very much. But these little white spots will look like where the waves are breaking after I've added paint to my picture. So we're going to use a watercolor set today and what you need to do first before you've started is wet your brush and just sort of wake the colors up. So I'm just dropping a little bit of water into each of my colors to wake the colors up because I haven't used them today and yours might be a new set that's never been used before so we're just adding a little bit of water so they're all just a little bit wet. It's really important when you're using a watercolor set that you're not 
pressing your brush down and making the bristles get flat and like twirling it in a circle and kind of digging in the color it's going to use too much color and mess your brush up it's more important that you just sort of use the very tip and just sort of lightly touch the paint and it usually takes just a touch so i will start with my yellow and i'm just going to touch the yellow and i'm going to add some yellow paint to my sun if it's not as dark as you would like it to be you can like touch it again to add a little bit more value I'm gonna wet my brush touch my color I'm not digging in the color I'm just touching it little touch and add color so my background my sky is gonna be kind of a sunset so I'm gonna let my yellow go outside of my sun line and into my sky so that it looks like it's changing the color of my sky a little. And then I'll touch the orange and I'm gonna let my orange and my yellow mix just a little bit so I can see the transition between those two colors in my sky. And you do not have to do a sunset if you don't want to. You're painting your sky the way that you've imagined it or a way that you've seen it before. After I've done yellow to orange, I'm gonna wash my brush touch my red again not digging in the color just lightly tapping it and I'm adding some red just a touch into my sky so when the Sun sets it looks like the sky kind of gradually changes color as it's going away from the Sun my next color would be purple or violet so I'm just gonna lightly touch it and add just a little just a little touch of purple to my sky. It's going to fill the space. A little corner right here that needed it. And if you want to touch and kind of finish a little bit of it out with blue, you can. You're going to have a lot of blue in your water. And so I wouldn't do too much blue in your sky. And you can mix a little bit of the purple into it to kind of make an indigo color. You do want some transition. Now I finished painting, I need to let it lay flat and dry for a little bit and not lift it up because the paint will drip. But you might have noticed while I was painting, when I was working on the water, I did add a little bit of green into my blue to kind of give it kind of an oceany feel. And you're welcome to do that if you would like. Okay. Can't wait to see what you create. You can share photos of your art in the comments below this video or you can email them to Miss Coon at amkuhn at auburnschools.org. Thanks. Bye.